this chapter, we're going to introduce some of the basic ideas of probability. In this lesson, we're going to talk about odds and probability. Okay, hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at odds and probability. So talking about odds is another way of of discussing the probability of an event here, but they're not exactly the same. Sometimes we use them in kind of, in our greater culture here, we, we use these two words uh, interchangeably, but they are actually a little different. Uh, when we talk about odds, um, what we're doing is we're comparing the number, uh, let's, let's say it like this, it's the number of successful events, okay, to the number of failure events, okay? so. Probability is the number of successful events out of the total. But when we talk about, and, and sorry, I should say it like this, um, probability is written as a fraction, okay? Uh, whereas when we talk about uh, odds, we typically refer to them as, uh, as a ratio, something to something else, okay? So it's the number of successful events to the number of failures here. Um, and again, they're related. Uh, it's an easy thing to convert this into a probability because all you have to do is, is add these two numbers together to get the total, the denominator. That might not make a lot of sense. Let's take a look at some examples. Okay, let's take a look at some examples here. Suppose a local store is running a contest for their patrons and they print 5,000 tickets with a scratch away section. Of these, 150 say that you've won 25% off your purchase and 50 say that you've won 50% off your purchase. Okay, so what are the odds in favor? And usually when we talk about this, you, you have to state that. It's got to be the odds of something. Like, so you, you basically what we're doing here is we're identifying what number comes first. So we say in favor, then it's, it's the positive number coming first. And then in the next one here, as you see against, then it's the, the negative number coming first. So anytime we talk about odds, we have to, there's, there's always this little bit of an explanation that gets given right away here. So what are the odds in favor of getting a 50% off ticket? Okay, well, how many were 50% of 50? 50 were 50% off here, so that's 50. Now it's not out of, this isn't a probability. This is not out of, it's 50 to what number? Well. Out of 5,000 tickets that were produced, if 50 of them are 50% off, then that's got to be that 4,950 aren't, okay? And that's what we mean by, by it's written as this ratio here, okay? It's this, it's the number of successes, so it's the number of 50% tickets compared to the number of tickets that aren't. Now, often what we'll do is, is we'll try to simplify this just like you might simplify a fraction, and it turns out both of these numbers are divisible by 50. And if I do that, okay, I get this, 1 to 99. Okay, so for every, and basically what this means is for every one 50% off ticket, there are 99 tickets that aren't 50% off. So it gives you kind of a sense of, of the way that, uh, like the bin of tickets is being mixed up here. Now, if I wanted to um, come up with a probability, and I know I'm gonna talk about this later on here, but I'm thinking about it right now, so I'll talk about it anyway. If I wanted the probability of a 50% ticket, okay, and let's just look at this one right here. Uh, odds in favor of a 50% ticket, okay, this is the positive number. Well, that's the number that I'm gonna put up top here, so it's gonna be one, but not out of 99. It's not out of 99, it's out of the sum of those two. So it's gonna be out of one plus 99. So this would be one out of 100. That would be how I would get the probability. So I just wanna set the stage for kind of a, a question that's gonna come up later here. Let's look at the next one here. What are the odds against getting a 25% off ticket? Now, against means that what we're gonna put up here are the number of tickets that are not 25% off tickets. Well, there are 150 tickets that are 25% off. So that's going to go over here, 150 tickets here. But then I've got to go 5,000, whoops, divided by, sorry, not divided by, no, no, I'm doing that, minus 150. And that gets me 4,850 tickets, okay, that do not have that 25% 
off uh, written on them. Now, both of these are divisible by 50. Let's see if we can simplify this down. Both of these are divisible by 50. That's going to be 97, and then this will be 3. Okay? So for every 97 tickets that do not have a 25% off, there are three of them that do. So again, if you wanted, let's say, the probability, and let's say of 25% off, but this time we want it to be, again, because we're focusing on the, the, the negative here, not 25%. That's going to be 97 out of the total. So 97 out of 100. Again, this is not what the question's asking. Neither was this one up here. Okay, but I want you to know how you go, go from, from odds here to probability. Now down here, what is the probability of getting a 25% off ticket? Okay, well that's, that's pretty straightforward. If you want the probability of 25% off, there are 150 of them over 5,000. Okay, now I'm just going to see how that is going to simplify here, I think. No, they don't, it doesn't. So let's take 150 here. Uh, sorry, 5,000. And we're going to divide, is there any way I can simplify this? Nah. Okay. I'm going to divide top and bottom by, by 50. 150 divided by 50 is going to be 3. 5,000 divided by 50 is going to be 100. So essentially, the probability is going to be 3 out of 100. Okay. But again, this is 3 25% off tickets out of that group of 100 tickets. So this 100 tickets here includes those three. That, that's how we interpret probabilities. What is the probability of getting a 50% off ticket? And we've already talked about that. 50% off ticket. Well, there were 50 of them total out of 5,000. Okay, and so that's that's one ticket out of 100. But remember, this 100 tickets that we're talking about, it includes this number up here. Okay? Okay. Okay, in this next question we read that a bag of marbles has red, blue, and green marbles. The probability of randomly choosing a red is one half, and the probability of randomly choosing a blue is one third. So what are the odds in favor of choosing a red? Okay, so we know, we know that the probability of choosing a red is one out of two. Okay, so that means for every two marbles, one of them is red. So when we talk about in probability in, uh, sorry, the odds in favor of choosing a red, then what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have the number of red to the number of not red. Now the probability of red is one out of two. And so the number that we're seeing on top here is, is the successful number of reds. If you want to think about probability that way here. So that's going to actually go right here, the number of red. Now out of two does not mean that this is going to be two here because remember with a probability, this is the total number. So it includes that red there. So if this these two marbles that we're talking about there, one of them is red, then one of them isn't red. And so what happens here is to get, to get this number right here, it's going to be the denominator minus the numerator. The denominator minus the numerator to get one. So the prob sorry, the odds are one to one. If the probability of an event is one half, then the odds of that event are one to one. For every, for every one red marble, there is one marble that isn't red. Okay, half of them are red. What are the odds against choosing a blue? Okay, let's take a quick look at this. The probability, I think it's up there, yeah. The probability of choosing a blue is one out of three. Now, when we talk about the probability of the odds against, this means the number up front here is the number of not blue to the number of blue. That's, that's again, that's just how odds work. But with the probability of getting blue, and that we are told that up here, remember, this is the number of blues out of the total number of marbles here. So there is one blue in every group of three, or at least that's, sorry, I said that as if it's some sort of absolute there. That's just on, on average, right? So here's my one blue here. Now, remember, that one of those three marbles is blue, so the number ones that aren't blue are going to be two. So again, to get this number right here, when I'm going from a probability to the odds, I got I to gotta take the denominator and subtract the numerator to get one of those numbers there. Now, I just got to read carefully to figure out which one it is. 
So the, pro the odds here uh, against getting a blue would be two to one. Okay, for every two marbles here that, are, that aren't blue, there's one that is blue. Now, what are the odds in favor of choosing a green? Okay, now that's interesting. That's interesting. So what we're going to do here is the probability of getting a red is one half. The probability of getting a blue is one third. So the probability of getting a red plus the probability of getting a blue plus the probability of getting a green has to be equal to one because we were told that those are the only possibilities we have there. So the possibility of getting a red is one half. The possibility of getting a blue is one third. I don't know what the probability is of getting a green, but I know it's got to all add up to one. Okay, well, a half added to a third, I know that the denominator is going to be six. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator here by three. Here I'll multiply numerator and denominator there by two. So that's going to get me three out of six plus two out of six plus the probability of getting a green is all equal to one. Uh, that's going to be five-sixths plus the probability of getting a green is equal to one. And now to get the probability of getting a green, I'm going to subtract that five-sixths. So the probability of getting a green is going to be one minus five-sixths. Well, one is like six-sixths. Minus five-sixths is going to leave me with one out of six. So there we go. There's the probability of getting a green. So the odds in favor of getting a green is going to be the number of greens to the number of not greens. Now, looking at my probability here, I can take the numerator. There's the number of greens. But remember, my denominator is the sum of that number, the number of greens plus every other one here. So if I want to get this number, I'm just going to take the denominator and subtract the numerator. So 6, take away the one marble that's green, is going to leave me 5 that aren't green. For every one marble that I have in the bag that's green, there are five that aren't. Okay, so in this question we read that a company produced 4,000 shoes over the course of a week. The odds in favor of a shoe being defective is 3 to 1,677. So what is the probability of a shoe not being defective? <laughs> okay. This is a frustrating one because you really got to read this one carefully. So the odds in favor, in favor of a shoe being defective. Now that means that the number of defective shoes is up front. So this is defective and this is back here that is by, by, by definition of the way this works here, the odds, this is not defective. So if I want the probability of a shoe not being defective, I actually want this one in the numerator. So I want the probability of not defective. That is going to be that 1,677 divided by the total. Now, not, not the total of 4,000. Don't, don't get confused by that. The, when, we talk, when, when I start pulling the numbers out of the odds here, the total that I'm looking for is the sum of the both sides there. Uh, we'll deal with this later. I'm assuming that this has been simplified, that like the actual numbers would have been different, but the, the ratio got reduced. So this becomes 1677 over, well, I'm just going to add, I'm just going to add three to that, which is going to be 1680. Okay, now that probably doesn't communicate too much to us. So let's convert that to a, a decimal that might be a little bit more informative. This tells me that this is approximately 0.998. In other words, there's like a 99.8% chance that a shoe won't be defective. That's pretty good. Okay, That's really good. Now, how many shoes can be expected in this week of operation to be defective? Well, okay, so we're going to take the total number, 4,000, and we're going to multiply that by the proper the probability that it is defective. Well, in the, in the previous question here, I just figured out the probability that it wasn't defective. So I'm going to do the same thing, just the other way around. So I'm going to make this 4,000. There's my total. I'm going to multiply now. If I go back up to my odds here, here's the, the number that are defective, and there's the number that aren't. So the number that are defective, okay, if, if I want to figure out that probability, is going to be 3 out of 3 plus 1,677. Okay, so... This is now going to be the probability that a shoe is defective. 
And so now I just got to go to my calculator just to make sure that I've entered everything incorrectly. And I'm going to get approximately 6 point, uh, sorry, wow, 7.1. And that really is just approximately equal to 7. So I would expect that there are going to be seven pairs of shoes here, seven shoes, I should say, not pairs of shoes, just seven shoes that are going to be defective in one way or another. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope that gives you an idea of how you're going back and forth between uh, the probabilities written as an odd and the probabilities that are written as, as a probability with a ratio of successful events to total.